We're about to start our last session of the day before the IACR membership meeting and before we can all go enjoy a good brunch session. So I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Galardon from Weizmann, who's going to present joint work with Alessandro Chiesa and Elon Yorgev on the PCP theorem for interactive proofs and applications. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'll be talking about the PCP theorem for interactive proofs and applications, or you can be convinced by a conversation while barely listening, even to yourself. So hopefully by the end of this talk, you'll never have to endure a boring conversation anymore. Uh, and this is joint work with uh, Sandro Chiesa and Elon Yogev. So in an NP proof system, a verifier wants to know the validity of some statement. The prover sends over uh, some message, the verifier reads the entire message and uh, decides whether it's convinced or not. And uh, the PCP theorem tells us that if the prover encodes its message in a specific way, then the verifier can be convinced even while reading just a few bits uh, from the proof. So uh, an interactive proof is a generalization of uh, an MP proof system where the verifier and prover have some longer conversation with multiple messages. And uh, in this paper, we ask, uh, how would a PCP theorem look for interactive proofs? So, Basically, we would get uh, we'd encode each one of the messages in some way, and then have uh, you know local access to each one of the messages, both from the verifier and from uh, the prover. And this object is called uh, an interactive oracle proof or an IOP, and it's the interactive analog of a PCP. So our main theorem says that you can take an interactive proof and transform it into an IOP with the same number of rounds. It's public coin, so the uh, verifier's messages are actually not encoded, they're just uniformly random bits. The proof length is uh, polynomial. Uh, following the interaction, uh, the verifier tosses logarithmic number of random coins to decide uh, where to query. And at the end, it queries each message a constant number of times. Previously, this was only known for extreme values of K, so it was shown by Joker for uh, two rounds and by Condon et al. for polynomial number of rounds. I will just mention that they didn't talk about IOPs, but uh, the model that they were looking at is actually equivalent to public coin IOPs. Uh, okay, so let's look at some applications of our theorem. Uh, our first application is IOP to IOP transformations. So we get uh, new generic transformations for IOPs that were previously only known for IPs. So for example, uh, if we want to uh, reduce the number of rounds of an IOP, so we have a K round IOP, and we want to get a K over two round IOP. So we can take this IOP, treat it as an IP, allow the verifier to just read everything, then use a classical transformation, uh, taking a K round IP and transforming it into a K over two round IP, then leverage our main theorem to get it back to a K over two round IOP. And uh, similarly, we can get private to public coin for uh, IOPs via the Goldwasser Sipser uh, transformation or perfect completeness in the same manner. Our second application is for hardness of approximation. So, in a satisfiability problem, you're given a Boolean formula and you're asked whether there exists some uh, satisfying assignment for the uh, formula. And the PCP theorem says that uh, SAT is NP hard to approximate to within a constant factor. Here, we're going to look at a generalization of SAT called k stochastic SAT, where uh, the variables are either chosen uniformly at random or existentially, and there are k alternations between these two. And uh, the value of such a formula is the expected fraction of satisfied clauses when uh, the existential variables are chosen so as to maximize this uh, value, this expected fraction. So we show that for every k, it is IP with K rounds hard to distinguish whether a KS sat instance has value one or has value at most one minus uh, one over O of K. So if you plug in uh, K equals one, you basically get the PCP theorem from, uh, from this. And, our, and this has been, uh, we improved this in subsequent work, this, this uh, gap. Uh, and our last application is uh, a commit and prove snark in the random oracle model. This is not a direct application of our main theorem, but of tools that we develop along the way. So what is a commit and prove snark? Well, we have a prover and a verifier. And along comes some committer that has uh, a value x1 in mind. 
and maybe and it sends a uh, short commitment of x1 and maybe another committer comes along and another committer they each have uh, different values and a prover who knows the values that the committers uh, put under the commitments will send a short proof that they together belong to some relation and the verifier will then read these commitments or read the proof and then uh, decide whether it's convinced that the prover is telling the truth about them belonging to the relation. So we show that every relation on k tuples that is decidable in non-deterministic time t has a commit and prove snark in the random oracle model with argument size that is polynomial in the security parameter in the number of uh, committers and uh, log t. And uh, the only assumption we use is the random oracle model. No further assumptions are required. Okay, so let's get back to our uh, main theorem. Uh, we want to go from an IP all the way to an IOP. And we're going to do this in two steps. The first step, we're going to get local access to the verifier messages. So uh, we only have local access to verifier messages, but we're still allowed to read the prover messages in full. And the second step, we're going to also encode the prover messages and then get our uh, full IOP. So let's uh, look at the first step. Uh, so let's assume for now that we have a one round uh, proof uh, that it's uh, also public coin. And let's denote the randomness by R and assume that we have a soundness error that's roughly one over R. We can get this easily with uh, standard parallel repetition of interactive proofs. Uh, so the proof looks as follows. The verifier sends some random string. The prover answers with uh, some message A. The verifier uh, looks at the random string row and the message A and decides where to accept or reject based on them. So here we want to get local access to this string row. We were allowed to read all of them, anything that the prover uh, sends. So let's uh, use a simple idea. Have the prover send back the same value that the verifier sent it. So just send back the same randomness. So now it sends back the same randomness, but uh, of course we can't really trust the prover. It might send us some uh, different random string. So we're going to add a, some check that they're equal, and this check has to be local. So we're going to choose an index and uh, just check that row and row prime agree on this index. A very simple check. That's it. So let's analyze this protocol. Completeness is rather straightforward, so I'm not going to get into it. And let's look at soundness. Let's fix a, some constant uh, delta. Uh, OK, so if row and row prime are delta far apart, then we reject with probability at least delta because as long as we uh, hit an index in which row and row prime disagree, uh, we, the verifier is going to reject. And this is good for us. Uh, constant uh, uh, soundness is, is good for us. So what about if they're close? If row and row prime are delta close, we don't have anything to fix this. So let's just hope that there are not many such uh, rows that are close to row prime for which the prover has an, uh, an accepting strategy. So how many row primes are there for which the prover has an accepting strategy? Well, there's exactly beta times two to the R beta is the soundness error. And it looks like this. And uh, let's look at all the bad rows. The bad choices of row are the ones that are close to such a row prime which means that they are within some uh, Hamming ball of radius r times delta. And this ball has size that is 2 to the h delta times r. h of delta is uh, the entropy function. Just uh, think of some small constant. Uh, and the problem here is that this we, ha we have to take this uh, Hamming ball around each one of the bad uh, row primes, and this easily covers the entire domain. So unfortunately, we can't just use row prime. So what do we do? Well, uh, our main observation is that if row and row prime are close, then row prime has to have high entropy. This is because row is a uniformly random string, and row prime agrees with it on most of its locations. So it must be borrowing most of the entropy that uh, row had. And the idea is to extract randomness from row prime because we didn't really need to have uh, row as a randomness. We just needed some random string uh, to, to play as the verifier's randomness. And when I say extract, I mean uh, 
using an extractor, which is a function that uh, receives a high entropy source and outputs an almost uniform uh, string. So let's do that. Now we extract randomness outside of row prime, get some row star and use that instead. And this protocol would work, uh, assuming a small extraction error, which I'm gonna ignore for this talk. But uh, unfortunately there are no deterministic extractors. So we, like this, these kinds of extractors don't exist. We actually need to have some random seed as well. And uh, the prover needs to know the seed in order to answer for the correct uh, row star. And uh, we're going to use a very good extractor that has uh, seed length, something like uh, log one over beta, and also small error, which again, I'm going to keep ignoring. So great, this protocol works, but we're back to the same problem we had before. Like we're reading a few bits from rho, but now we have to read all of s. And the point is that s is much, much shorter than rho used to be. So let's... Uh, take the same strategy that we did before and try it again. So now the prover is returning, is supposed to return the same, uh, the same uh, seed, and now we call it S prime, and we're choosing one index to check whether S and S prime agree on this index, just like we did before with row. And let's uh, analyze this. So if, and uh, let's uh, again fix a constant delta and assume that row prime has high entropy. We've already argued that if it doesn't have high entropy, then we reject with constant probability. So if S and S prime are far, then of course uh, we reject with high probability. Uh, and if they're close, let's have the same analysis that we did before. So now the bad choices of S prime are those for which after applying the extractor, the uh, prover has some strategy, and this is uh, the amount of such bad S primes is roughly the same as uh, in the original protocol, uh, except for this extractor error that I keep ignoring. And uh, let's look at the new protocol. So bad choice of uh, seed is one which is close to such a uh, bad S prime. And now the Hamming ball has radius that is something like log one over beta uh, times delta which is much smaller. So it comes out, uh, the number of uh, strings around it come out to something like one over square root beta, as long as uh, delta is some small enough constant just to kill this uh, O of uh, log one over beta. And so now the ball is very small. And if we take all of the bad S's, we, uh, all the bad, sorry, S primes, take the balls around each one of them, we get that this covers at most uh, square root beta of the domain, which is good for us because beta was some constant, square root beta is some other constant. Okay, great. So we've managed to do this for a constant number of rounds and uh, so for, for one round. And uh, I claim that it works for any interactive proof. So I have to extend it to multiple rounds. And we just do this by applying the transformation again and again separately for each round. Uh, it's exactly the same, except that we use round by round soundness in the analysis rather than standard soundness. Okay, so again, we wanted to go from IP to an IOP, and we went through this intermediate step of uh, uh, getting local access to the verifier messages, but still reading the entire uh, uh, message that the prover sends. And now we're gonna do the next step. We have this intermediate object, and we're gonna turn it into a full-fledged IOP. So to do so, we introduce a new object called index decodal PCPs. An index decodal PCP has four algorithms, an indexer, a prover, a verifier, and a decoder. And it works as follows. We have the prover and the verifier, and along comes some indexer who has a value X1 in mind, and it sends an encoding of X1. And then along comes maybe another one, sends an encoding of uh, some x2, and let's say another one, a prover who knows these values under the encodings x1 to x3 uh, will send a proof that they all belong to some relation. The verifier might toss some coins and then reads a few symbols from each one of the proofs and decides whether to accept or reject the prover's claim that, they, that uh, the values underneath the encodings belong to this relation. So what do we require from uh, uh, this object? We require completeness. So if everyone is telling the truth, everyone is uh, acting honestly, 
then the verifier should always accept. And on the other hand, if uh, the verifier accepts, then there should be something interesting going on underneath these encodings. Uh, formally, we say that if the verifier accepts the high probability, then we can uh, individually decode each one of the messages sent by the indexers so that they belong to some relation, to the relation, sorry. So if the relation is non-trivial, this means that uh, there has to be something interesting going on underneath the encodings. So we show that uh, any relation R on K tuples that is uh, decidable in non-deterministic time T has an index decodable PCP where the overhead uh, of the indexer encoding is linear. The proof length is poly T. We have a binary alphabet and the, the very far makes a constant number of queries to each one of these oracles. And the decodability bound, the bound over which, if the verifier accepts, then decoding these messages out of the, uh, the encodings as possible is some constant. So now we have, how do we use this? We have this intermediate object where the verifier reads a few bits from its own messages, but still reads the whole uh, prover messages. And uh, what, we'll, what we'll do is just encode each one of the prover's messages with the indexer and finally send a proof that had the verifier read the messages underneath the encoding, then it would have accepted. And the verifier checks this, which requires reading a few bits from uh, each one of these uh, messages. And uh, I'm not going to get into the proof itself right now, but uh, at a very high level, if a malicious uh, prover were to be able to convince the verifier with high probability, then because of the decodability of the index decodable PCP, uh, we, we know that there have to be some messages underlying these uh, uh, the prover's proofs that actually convince the verifier, and we can use that to attack the original uh, proof. So now uh, we wanted to go from an IP to an IOP. We did this in two steps. First of all, we got in, uh, local access just to the verifier messages. And then we added uh, the ability to have local access to the prover messages. And uh, I'll just leave you with one open problem. So in this work, we show that uh, how to get uh, transform a K round IP into a K round IOP with O of K queries, because we had a constant number of queries to each one of the rounds. Subsequently, we've been able to lower the number of queries to k over log n uh, with a lower bound of constant, of course. And uh, it's still open whether we can get from a k round IP to a k round IOP with a uh, constant number of queries overall. And uh, that's it. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions from the audience? Do we have any questions? Okay, so uh, I'm curious about the application to uh, commit and prove uh, You mentioned the parameters. Could you elaborate a little bit on uh, how those pr parameters compare with uh, other commit and prove snarks? Uh, well, other commit and proof snarks are not in the random oracle model, so they're not as good as uh, commit and proof snarks from uh, 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 specific assumptions. Uh, but we use only the random oracle model. Okay, thank you. So let's thank the speaker again.